Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Got a feeling this picture tells the story. Misty and murky and cold and the chance of some heavy rain still hanging over some parts of the viewing area. Adam Kasky with details on that potential rainfall and when these gray skies will clear so we can warm up coming up in just a few minutes. But first, a massive web of drug activity being torn apart little by little by Seguin and Guadalupe law enforcement with the help from federal investigators. Today, they revealed a list of 21 targeted suspects across the state. 11 of those people arrested this morning in the Seguin area alone. Courtney Friedman explains the huge criminal enterprise starts in Mexico, spreads through South Texas to other parts of the state. The sign over the door says we don't call 911, but today officers came anyway. SWAT teams with warrants broke through the doors and windows of this Geronimo, Texas home. They were looking for and arrested this man, Jesse Ricky Escobedo, accused of being the local leader and supply source for a drug enterprise stretching across the border. He's one of 11 people arrested near Seguin today on charges involving meth, cocaine, and heroin. And you have people that do nothing but transport. You have people that are retail distributors, so they're the ones out selling, the, you know, at the street level, mid-level, you know, suppliers. So it's an organization. We discovered they had ties to bigger wholesale drug distributors who were operating from the Republic of Mexico and distributing not only narcotics here in the Seguin, San Antonio area, but also pushing narcotics up to San Marcos, Austin, and all the way up to Fort Worth and Dallas area. Seguin Police Chief Terry Nichols and DEA Special Agent Dante Sorianello have been working together for two years, along with the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office and six other agencies. They raided a second home today as well, this one in Seguin. This all started with Seguin police officers noticing an uptick in methamphetamine arrests and seizures. They called state and federal investigators who all agree meth is the main problem here. It's able to be produced produced in a location across the border at quantities and purity levels never seen before in the country. Sorianello says this is a complicated network of criminals and there's not just one specific cartel responsible. The links into Mexico, it comes from a couple of, of your different uh, cartels on the smuggling, but that's an end we're still working right now. If you're trafficking narcotics in Seguina, uh, Guadalupe County, we will target you and we will arrest you. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office is working with homicide detectives in Sugarland near Houston, where a woman and child were found dead in a home there. The man officials say owns that home, was found in Guadalupe County today, dead from a single gunshot wound. The body of 53-year-old Richard Logan was found at TAS Environmental Service just south of San Marcos. Logan does not work there. Detectives say that his death is related to the investigation in Sugarland. Police there did a welfare check when they were informed of Logan's death in Guadalupe County. No one answered the door. Inside that home, officers found the bodies of a woman and an eight or nine year old boy. Both had been shot. Neither have been identified. Autopsies for all three have been ordered. The Bear County Sheriff's Office investigators with their first murder case of the year after a man's body found by a young family member in South Bear County this morning. No word from the sheriff's office on how that victim died, and so far, no arrests in the case. Devin Clark at the scene as more family and neighbors arrived to learn the bad news. This is a nice neighborhood. Like I said, it's nice. Before 8.30 this morning, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a child around the age of six discovered a 37-year-old family member dead in his backyard. He says this happened when the victim's family stopped by his house on Sandy Circle on the way to take the kids to school. Once they got there, it was clear there was a major problem. There's obvious trauma to the, to the gentleman's body. Um, you know, I will tell you also that we don't believe this is a random act. Other family members and neighbors who didn't want to be identified showed up to the scene of the sheriff office's first homicide of the year to face the harsh reality. The victim was someone they knew. I was sick and just the way it happened. I mean, we we come we live down the street from him. Investigators believe the murder happened sometime overnight and that the crime scene spanned from inside the victim's house to his backyard. They aren't releasing his name just yet, but those who knew him say he was a loving father. I can't believe that. I mean, I, last time I saw him was, I want to say about two months ago. Tonight, officials hoping to nail down who targeted him and why. 
And the Bear County Sheriff's Office is asking for the public's help with this case. If you do have any information, you're asked to call 335-6070. You can remain anonymous. If you want to submit tips online, you can do so at BCSO tips at bear.org. Reporting in South Bear County, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Bear County deputies were responding to that suspicious death in South Bear County when they learned of an apparent murder nearby. We now know it's believed to be the first family violence related homicide in Bear County this year. Just over two miles away from that first scene, deputies found the body of a 45 year old woman who'd been shot several times. By then, investigators say the 37 year old male suspect had crashed through a gate at the house as he tried to speed away. But a daughter in her 20s at the home had already called the sheriff's office. Using a vehicle description, the suspect was soon taken into custody at a house nearby. The sheriff says he appeared injured, but it's not clear how. But he did say an argument ended with the woman's death. The sheriff adds it's likely an example of Bear County's ongoing family violence crisis. We've got to figure something else out. What we're doing is not working, clearly. People aren't getting the message, so if we've got to throw them under a prison somewhere before they get the point, then let's do that. Salazar says he would support new legislation that would compound a murder charge if family violence is also involved. The suspect in this case is in the Bear County Jail tonight. We have new information on the arrest of a man in connection with a murder at an apartment complex on the northwest side earlier this year. We first told you about the arrest of 22 year old John Anthony sharing house last night on the night beat. Police say he killed 20 year old Anthony Sanks back on January 7th in the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek. According to an arrest report, investigators found the victim had been talking to a man with the alias NHC Bobo via Facebook Messenger. Police say they were able to link that account to Sharinghausen. The report states the two men agreed to meet up to, quote, commit a violent crime, end quote, against someone else. But when Sharinghausen showed up, police say he shot and killed the victim instead. Investigators are looking into another murder case where they believe Sharinghausen may also be involved. Not much left of a convenience store on the city's west side after a late night fire there. The flames and smoke destroying the business in the 1300 block of Calabria. As Katrina Weber reports, it's a tough loss for the owners and for that neighborhood. They brought out their big guns. Still, firefighters' aerial water hoses were no match for the fire inside this west side convenience store. It had a head start. When we got here, there was fire through the roof, burned out the whole roof. All the flames were like... They, they were so big, all you can hear is just like everything exploding. Curiosity had neighbors back out in the 1300 block of Culebra this morning, where they had seen that huge fire around 930 last night. They wanted to see the ruins of what had been a favorite store known as Food Mart Mom and Pops. These store people are really good to everybody that's over here. Yeah, it's Mom and Pops. These two friends were caught off guard by it all. They say earlier it seemed to be business as usual. I passed by the store earlier from coming to get pizza and, you know, the store was closed and all of a sudden, about 45 minutes later, you know, we smell this went up in flames. Although it says here that the business is open 24 hours a day, firefighters say it was actually closed at the time of the fire and that no one was inside. Because of the fire, there is no inside anymore. Firefighters say what's left of the building is unstable and will have to come down. We've applied a lot of water to make sure everything's out, so there's not going to be anything salvageable but the lot itself. As for how this fire started, that's a question arson investigators will have to answer. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. Let's go to the Trans Guide camera at 35 North as it hooks up to Loop 410. You can see this is on the northeast side. Very slow going, not all that unusual, but uh, look at just how murky and misty it is out there. Traffic slowing down, I'm guessing, because of the weather conditions and the traffic conditions. Opioid overdose deaths. It's a problem nationwide and here in San Antonio, and the CDC is reporting that 10% of those deaths happen to people who are released from jail within a month. Here locally, the Bear County Opioid Task Force will be using money from a grant that will help those who are re-entering the community. As Stephanie Cerner reports, the program will begin from booking to release. 
we're talking about people's lives. That's a brother, a sister, a mother, a father. So uh, there's a humanitarian need here. According to the Bear County Opioid Task Force, 1,800 overdoses are reversed every year in Bear County. The task force credits the distribution of Narcan, an opioid reversal drug, for saving those lives. Now Bear County is expanding their reach with a new medication-assisted treatment pilot program. We're going to be starting a pilot program in the jail, of which we've got a, um, a grant for, uh, that will help in that transition when someone comes in that has a drug problem, not only help in the jail, but help in once they come back into uh, real life. The pilot program will help people struggling with opioid addiction behind bars and that are re-entering the community. It starts when someone is booked and continues through incarceration until they're released. Case managers will facilitate the delivery of the treatment, which is two shots of Vivitrol, a medication that blocks the effect of opioids. So people would get two shots over 60 days in the jail and then two shots after release. So that's four months and uh, we feel like it's a, a best practice. The task force anticipates that it will help about 100 people. Medication assisted treatment in incarceration throughout the country has shown that it will reduce overdose and reduce re-arrests, re which saves the taxpayers money. So it's the right thing to do and it makes financial sense. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam because it's such a beautiful picture out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been a yucky day, Adam. Yeah, it's been one of those days, just damp, dreary, and you know, it wasn't necessarily damp all day long, but the dampness would come and go throughout the day, a little drizzle, a few sprinkles, and a few isolated showers, and cool, too. So 51 was our high temperature, but that happened shortly after midnight. All afternoon, we were stuck in the mid 40s and only a hundredth of an, of an inch of rain at the airport. Let's take a look at the current readings right now. Already 38 Lost Maples, 42 Helotus, Floresville 47, Hondo, you're 46 along with Divine. This evening, temperature's not falling off all that much. We'll have some more drizzle, a few sprinkles, but the real rain holding off until later tonight. That should wash some of these allergens out of the air. Mold is moderate, mountain cedar, elm, and ash on the low end. We'll talk about how much rain we could get coming up.